Uh, hi everybody, uh, my name is Kai Evenson and I am the creator behind Mary Mead and Clay. Uh, we're a small ceramic shop uh, or studio rather located in Bath, Maine. Um, and we really focus on kind of handcrafted ceramic items that are inspired by uh, the natural world, particularly the Maine coast for us since we're right on it. Um, so currently we're, we're producing a, a pretty small set of items. We're, we're currently expanding the, the, the range of what we're able to produce. Um, we're a pretty new studio. Um, but so far we, um, we have our most popular items are ceramic uh, bottle openers and bottle stoppers that are made um, from slip cast lobster claws. Um, so that would be going from something like this to actually a finished item that is like this. Um, additionally, um, we do a pretty popular line of um, uh, ceramic horseshoe crab. This would be an actual horseshoe crab shell that we found. Um, we, of course, these are endangered species, at least some would say, um, if they're uh, kind of on the cusp. Um, so we go out and find shells and then we're able to create ceramic versions for people to enjoy um, in their own home in a way that won't kind of stink up your living room. Um, so today what I'm going to do is just give you a quick demo um, kind of showing you how we're able to go from an actual item like this, uh, the actual lobster claw, to the ceramic version. Um, this would be unfired of course. Um, so this will be involves number one making a mold and then number two actually slip casting in that mold to actually create the, the ceramic item. Okay, um, well, before we actually jump into the demo, um, just wanted to give you a quick tour of my studio. Um, actually, a shared studio. I share it with my lovely wife, Jackie, um, who is also a visual artist. Um, so you can see here, I have my slip casting table where we'll be doing the demo today. Um, up top, you can see all of those molds are for um, lobster claws. So that would be both for the bottle stoppers and the bottle openers. A little below there, we can see some larger ones. Those are for uh, horseshoe crabs and some uh, assorted shells that I've been experimenting with, um, both scallop and oyster. Um, over here, um, a mix of epoxies, magnets, uh, sculptable glue, just a hodgepodge of all the other items that I need to actually make um, the claws and the, um, the finished horseshoe crabs. Um, you can see below, just got a little bit more storage and some uh, the place where failed experiments go to die. Um, further over here, um, a little bit more storage, <laughs> some more failed experiments, um, some of which came out okay, but just, you know, not quite right. Um, and then the few horseshoe crabs that we have left, <laughs> along with lots of extra tails, since I break those pretty frequently. Um, over further, we've got uh, a 3D printing station. Um, this would actually be for ceramic 3D printing, um, which I don't currently use for Mary Mead and Clay. Um, but I do, um, I've been doing some standard thermoplastic 3D printing um, for some kind of exciting new giant shell products that I'll be debuting um, next year, which should be fun. Um, and over here with our nice view out the window, we have our glazing setup. Um, this is my section over here. You can tell because it's horribly cluttered and messy. Um, I've been just kind of in in production mode for several months now and, and in particular the last few weeks is trying to get everything ready for the holidays um, so it doesn't always look this this awful um, but from this um, comes out some pretty beautiful project products if i do say so myself so the first process the first part of the process of slip casting is uh, preparing the object that you actually want to be slip cast um, so in the case of this lobster claw or so this one, which we haven't actually cast yet, which is a particularly massive one, it would be actually adding something like this to the base here, which would then um, create the actual um, kind of an extension of the actual lobster claw that we would then be able to attach the bottle opener to it itself to. Um, so you kind of have to like think through what you want the eventual object to look like. And in our case, that would be something like this. So once you've actually prepared the object that you want, um, 
then you need to prepare the plaster mold. So this would be a completed plaster mold right here. Um, I'm not going to cover the process of actually creating a plaster mold. Um, you can find many, many resources for that online on YouTube, for example. And if that is of interest to you, you can simply uh, search for two-part plaster mold on Google or YouTube and you'll come up with many dozens of tutorials. Um, this is a pretty standard one. Um, but just kind of what I'll say is, in order to do that, you can see that this, um, this, is, this mold was made for this claw right here. Um, so a little part that you can't see here is actually the drain spout. So when this was made, um, this also had a little drain spout, a little piece of um, actually clay that kind of extended this object. And the reason that we need to do that is so when we then put these two parts together, there is a, a pour and drain spout at the top. So the rest we will kind of hold together with rubber bands so it's sealed around the edges and the only hole is right there. And so what we're going to do is pour a uh, liquid clay called a slip into that hole. Um, the process then requires you to wait a variable amount of time. Uh, it really depends on the humidity and the heat, kind of where you're, where you're working. Um, basically what you want to have happen is for the plaster to absorb a sufficient amount of moisture from the slip leaving enough of a kind of leftover, um, essentially a, a leftover base to the, to the ceramic. So um, we want at least, you know, three, four, maybe five millimeters of a, a clay shell um, surrounding the actual base, and then we'll pour out the rest, the remaining slip. So it won't be solid, the, the claw will be hollow, um, as you can see with these, um, but it, it'll be thick enough to give it some nice strength. Um, when clay is fired, um, it becomes vit vitrified, meaning that the, the molecules essentially like meld together and become almost like stone. So even if it is hollow like this, it's actually very, very strong. Um, so we'll get started in slip casting next. Okay, so we have our mold. We're gonna stick it together. Stick a nice rubber band around the edge. So it's sealed sometimes, depending on how big the mold is you really want to put two on otherwise some of the slip will leak out the edges and just create a big mess which nobody likes once we've done that where we can pour what the slip i have a, a pretty small amount of slip just in this container not much to see it's just a, a liquid clay um, in, in most cases it's, it's clay water and then um, a, an anti-flocculation agent like Darvan or something or along those lines, which really just means that you can get it to be um, to behave more like a liquid with less actual water in it um, so that it will actually dry faster. So pretty straightforward once you have it here, just pour the liquid clay into the hole so you can see just right up to the top there. Um, and now for the first part of the, the, the boring stuff, which is now we just get to wait somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes again, depending on the, um, essentially the weather conditions um, within the, the studio or the, the wider world. Um, so I'll pause here and we'll continue in, a, in about 15. Okay, so it's been not, honestly, not nearly 15 minutes, but since this is just a demo, I'm gonna go fast. Um, so you can see um, some of the uh, slip has, it's, it's, you can start to see the beginnings basically of the shell around the edges there, which is what we want. Um, I did uh, uh, once or twice top this off um, while this video was paused. Um, that would be very boring to watch. Um, but slowly as the moisture from the slip is absorbed into the, um, the plaster, you'll start to see essentially the level of slip in the mold uh, go down. So you just kind of want to keep that topped off um, throughout the process, throughout those 15 minutes or whatever it ends up being. Um, but so now we're just going to say that it's good enough. Um, if this was a claw that I was actually going to use, um, I would let it go a little bit longer. Um, but uh, for this it will suffice. So what I'm doing now is just using a little uh, pottery knife to kind of stir the slip up in there um, Being careful not to hit the edges because we don't want to have any impact or warp the actual object itself um, This will just make it pour out a little bit easier. 
So I'm just going to take this and flip it over the actual slip bucket. And then you can see, there we go. You can see all of that slip draining out. I'll make sure we get it all. You have to be a little careful here. Um, sometimes you'll get like air pockets in there um, that will prevent some of the slip from leaking out. That's not always a problem, but um, it will sometimes uh, cause the actual object to be much thicker, much heavier um, than it needs to be, um, which again, isn't necessarily a problem, but um, we try to get these as uniform as we can. Um, so that looks pretty good. So you can see now hollow again inside and you have a, a pretty thin shell. This actually probably would be fine, um, even though it was only honestly like seven minutes or so. Um, but I haven't used these in a little while, so the, the molds are extra dry. Um, so now uh, we get to do some more weighting. So at this point, we need to wait for the clay that's in the plaster mold to become dry enough to handle. Um, and again, this depends kind of on weather conditions, what, what uh, humidity level is and such. Um, usually it takes about an hour. Um, but it can take longer, particularly for larger objects, or even for this object. If I had been using this mold, for example, if this is the second time today I had used this mold, it, it would have a little bit extra moisture in it from the first uh, slip cast uh, that I put through. Um, so it would take a little bit longer to dry out. Um, but since this is the first I'm done today, it'll probably take you know 45 minutes to an hour, um, and then it'll be ready to take out. So we'll take a break until then. Okay. Um, so it's been about an hour now, so we should be able to open our mold and see what we've got in here. Get the bands off, gotta carefully open. And we can see I've got the claw there. You can see it's all hollow. Um, there's a little bit of leakage you can kind of see around the edges. Um, <laughs> been in production mode for quite a few months at this point, so these molds are just a little messy, and that's the reason for that. Um, so now I'm just going to try to gingerly lift this guy up without messing it up. Um, the goal really is to um, basically let the form speak for itself and try. <laughs> Try not to add anything um, or try to or really just mess it up. Um, so use a little exacto razor and just slice off this top that was the drain spout. And then just to make sure that it's got a really nice, just kind of flat bottom, just kind of set it down so it stands up like that. And there we go. So it's got a nice pretty reasonably wet not too bad at this point um a cast claw that would become a bottle stopper um, at this point um, normally what i would do is actually let it sit for a day or so um, and just dry out a little bit more um, and get to what we would call leather hard where the clay is not quite so wet not quite so pliant as this um, a little bit easier to work with but it's a little bit harder um, so it's a little bit easier just to clean up the edges here um, however uh, since we don't have that amount of time I'll just kind of clean it up by hand here which is harder to do when it's wet but still gonna just just want to kind of clean up the seam around the edge right where the two parts of the mold connected down and get the other side and there. See it's a little finicky when it's this wet. But again this is really just to clean up. This is just removing the, the seams that are from the mold. I'm not trying to add anything or take anything away from that's actually representative of the actual uh, lobster shell. Tool here. Just want to clean that up. So it's nice and smooth. And get it looking like it was when it was an actual lobster claw. And clean. 
normally when I'm doing this, I would not be doing one claw at a time. Um, as you can see from all of these uh, molds over here, I can do, um, I think, about two dozen at a time. That would be combined the, the openers and the stoppers. Um, the stoppers being also lobster claws, obviously, but just a smaller one that will fit a little easier on a uh, bottle stopper. So I usually be doing uh, a couple dozen at a time casting, and then at this stage I would be having maybe 50 or, or more, I mean several dozen, that I would just be doing in a batch, um, if that makes it a little bit easier. But so that you can kind of get the sense of what, I, what I'm trying to do there again. And it's, it's wet, so it's a little bit harder to do, but just cleaning up the edges to get rid of that seam that was left over. Now at this point, this would be ready to just kind of sit and dry until um, it becomes um, dry enough to fire, um, which means basically all of the moisture needs to have been uh, needs to have evaporated. Um, and at that point, you can do what's called the bisque fire, which turns this uh, uh, an unfired clay into this. Um, still not uh, it hasn't been high fired yet, so it's not as strong as it will be once we glaze it um, and then do the glaze firing, but uh, plenty strong to work with. This, you don't really need to worry about um, doing anything other than maybe dropping it on the cement floor, uh, which I have done a couple times. Um, these, on the other hand, are, are, are you can pretty easily, as you can see, pretty easily deform that. Yeah, I'm not gonna use this one, but um, there you have it. That's the process. Um, in a subsequent video, I might show um, a little bit more of the glazing process. Um, and then also, of course, going from the glazed claw to the actual opener. Um, that can actually be the finished project. project. Um, well, thanks for joining me today. That's it. Take care.